Every year, over 2.5 million people visit Dollywood in Tennessee, coming to experience the thrilling roller coasters, enthralling entertainment offerings, and the talented local craftsmen. In a few weeks, I'm excited to visit the park for the first time myself and experience everything, including the southern charm, that this park is known for. But it got me thinking, why is there a Dolly Parton theme park in the first place? For review time, I'm Luke, and we are here to answer a tale as old as time. Why does Dolly Parton have her own theme park? Before Dolly would step into the theme park ownership boots, the park went through several name changes and expansions. When it first opened in 1961, it was known as Rebel Railroad, based on the similar park Tweetsie Railroad in Blowing Rock, North Carolina. On offer at this small park was a town with a saloon, general store and blacksmith, as well as an authentic coal-fired steam train ride. Aboard the train you were attacked by train robbers, but were protected by Confederate soldiers. And that's all I'm going to say about that. 1961 was a different time. Rebel Railroad would open for just under 10 years, when in 1970 it was purchased by Cleveland Brown's owner, Art Modell. He would go around making several large-scale changes to the park, beginning with a name change to Gold Rush Junction, and also including new campgrounds and cabins for guests to stay in, a brand new theatre, as well as several family-friendly rides, including a log flume that interestingly started its life at the 1964 World's Fair in New York, alongside iconic Disney attractions such as It's a Small World and the Carousel of Progress. Another ownership change would occur in 1977, when the park was sold to the Hirschend family. The family weren't strangers to theme park ownership, owning and operating the Silver Dollar City theme park in Branson, Missouri. So it shouldn't be a shock that Gold Rush Junction had its name changed to Silver Dollar City, Tennessee. The Hirschend family immediately got to work on infusing the park with a genuine small town Smoky Mountains feel, inviting artisans and tradespeople to bring their works and wares to the park, showcasing their uniqueness. The next 10 years of the park's history would see countless additions, including new entertainment offerings, craftsmen's boots, and a ride that is still a family favorite to this day, Blazing Fury, an indoor dark ride roller coaster. 10 years after the name change, the park would see its biggest change yet. In the early 1980s, Dolly Parton had begun to consider establishing her own theme park in the Pigeon Forge area. But in 1985, she would instead choose to become a part owner in the Hirschen family's already established Silver Dollar City, investing several million dollars to expand, enhance and rename the park. Dolly was a local to the severe county the park calls home. She would make her impact on the park known immediately, with the first thing to change being the name. Silver Dollar City would become Dollywood. But she didn't just slap her name on the sign out front and call it a day. In her first year of partnership, they opened a brand new land called Rivertown Junction. Within this land was a new restaurant, theater, river rapids, and recreation of Dolly Parton's Tennessee Mountain Childhood Home, the first of many attractions to truly embrace the legendary story of Dolly Parton. And if you enjoy the legendary stories we tell here at Review Time, make sure to leave a like and subscribe. The new name, attractions and starring owner would directly lead to a huge success for the park, with 1.3 million visitors attending in 1986, the first year after the change a whopping 75% attendance increase over the previous season. Parton said she became involved with the park because she always thought that if I made it big or got successful at what I had started out to do, that I wanted to come back to my part of the country and do something great. Something that would bring a lot of jobs into this area, which might give Walt Disney's wanting a place where he could also have fun with his children a run for its money when it comes to the most wholesome reason to own a theme park. She would ultimately succeed in that wish as well as Dollywood is now the largest employer in the region. Oh, hey, you caught me doing some light reading, but while you're here, 
let me tell you about today's sponsor, Trade Coffee, an online website connecting you with America's best craft coffee roasters. Their online quiz matched me up with Necessary Coffee, a Pennsylvania-based coffee roaster that lived up to its name. This coffee has definitely been a necessary part of my daily routine since receiving it this week. Trade is so confident their human-powered algorithm will be able to match you to your perfect cup. If they get it wrong, they'll send you a whole new, expertly selected bag of coffee for free. That's right, your coffee will be fresher and hotter than the takes in this book. Right now, Trade is offering new subscribers a total of $30 off your first order, plus free shipping, when you go to drinktrade.com forward slash time, or click the link in the description below. That's more than 40 cups of coffee for free. Get started by taking their quiz at drinktrade.com forward slash time, and let Trade find you a coffee that you'll love. That's drinktrade.com forward slash time for $30 off. And now, back to me. The biggest thing about Dollywood is that it's not just a celebration of Dolly Parton and her life in name only. The entire park is a celebration of her, her family, and her home region. The previously mentioned recreation of her childhood home was lovingly crafted by her brother Bobby, and the interior was created by her mother, which also includes real Parton family treasures. Elsewhere in the park, you can visit the Chasing Rainbows Museum, which allows visitors to see memorabilia spanning the over 50 year career of the park's namesake, including awards, knickknacks, and of course, clothes. Lots and lots of fabulous sequined clothes. Just outside the museum, you can also step foot inside Dolly Parton's tour bus and see how she lives when she's on the road touring. But while so much of the park is dedicated to Dolly, she has never ridden any of the attractions, saying, I don't ride the rides. I never have. I have a tendency to get motion sickness. Also, I'm a little bit chicken. With all my hair, I got so much to lose, like my wig or my shoes. I don't like to get messed up. I'm gonna have some handsome man mess it up. I don't want some ride doing it. In the over 35 years since Dolly Parton has had a hand in this Tennessee mountain theme park, her imprint on the park itself and the entire amusement park industry is undeniable. Since joining the Hershen family in 1986, every single year, something new has been added to the park. In the first 10 years alone, Dollywood would add a new water toboggan thrill ride, a 1739-seat theater, the eight, million dollar Thunder Express roller coaster, the world's largest presentation of non-releasable bald eagles, a 60 foot tall Ferris wheel, and many, many more offerings. Since those first 10 years though, the additions to the park haven't slowed down. In 1999, they added the $8 million Tennessee Tornado, the world's first spiral loop coaster featuring back-to-back -back loops, 2007 would see their largest ever capital expansion in the park when they would open the $17.5 million Mystery Mine Steel Roller Coaster. In 2012, they would top that again with the $20 million Wild Eagle, America's first wing coaster. And in 2016, they would add an attraction that cemented them clearly on the map for thrill seekers, Lightning Rod, the world's first launched wooden roller coaster built by RMC. These are just some of the many things that have been added with the park's yearly expansions and additions. And this isn't even mentioning the $20 million water park that was built in 2001, Dollywood's Splash Country. Dolly Parton's influence on the park is seen as a giant umbrella constantly sitting above park employees, management, and the Hershen family, who still own and operate the park with her. It is said that her presence is so strong that many people operate the park as if Dolly is there with them daily, from the frontline cast members to boardroom meetings. The hometown family feel of the park is also further cemented with operational choices such as no alcohol being available within the park and them holding a non-denominational church service every Sunday inside the Robert F. Thomas Chapel within the park named after the doctor who delivered Dolly Parton 
which provides an interesting bucket list item for some, experience a church service within a theme park. Ultimately, Dolly's dream to give something back to where she grew up succeeded. Not only with the park being the largest employer in the region, Dollywood is the most popular ticketed attraction in the entire state of Tennessee. It's a weird thing to comprehend. A theme park that bears the name and part ownership of a country music superstar. But for a lot of people, Dolly is what makes the park so incredible. And I'm excited to experience the park and everything it has to offer in just a few weeks time. So make sure you come back soon for Review Time's review of Dollywood. From the home of all things theme parks, I'm Luke for Review Time. Thanks for watching. We hope you enjoyed this week's episode of Review Time. If so, be sure to like and subscribe and also check out our podcast, Review Time's Theme Park Cast, available on your podcasting platform of choice.